every three years we're reviewing everybody's course that's adjunct and full-time. I think we're going basically um, annually, or I should say every two semesters is probably a more accurate way to put it in terms of how often our courses get reviewed. Every four years. So this will take us for, for courses that were developed in 2015, and we have 80 of those. So we're going to meter that out so that it's manageable. Well, at Maritime, we passed an online learning policy a few years ago that I was involved in. And part of it was uh, an online course review every three to five years of all the online courses just to make sure they were up to date and to talk about improvements in the industry. It wasn't the faculty senate, it was the, uh, the academic council, so it was all the deans and the department chairs. Um, so they made the final vote on approving the policy, but the policy was um, uh, written by um, an online learning committee. So it was myself, a uh, director of online learning, and we had a faculty representative from every department on campus who had input, and we went back and forth a few times. The standard historically had been that we try to do uh, formal course reviews every three years. Um, and we try to work in the revision cycles on a three-year basis. Um, I have heard from the instructional design staff that they're looking at a slightly different cycle now. Um, we also had, you know, like many of us, I'm sure, um, with looking at issues of accessibility, we've done more comprehensive reviews in most of our programs over the last three years than we have um, historically. So that's been a huge effort to go through pretty much our entire curriculum um, and review for accessibility. Um, I think our planning in this current time is looking at it more of a just-in-time kind of approach um, when it seems like it's more comfortable for the faculty member to be going through the review versus sort of an artificial, you know, every third year kind of approach. So if he or she is adopting a new book or if he or she is, you know, wants to adopt a new set of learning resources, maybe they get on that review cycle when it's good for them. We are required by, by the state to review our K-12 courses, um, a, a certain percentage of them every year. It's about 25 percent or so. Uh, so what our plan is to do is to, is to review um, about 25 percent of all of our courses um, every year. So it gives us a cycle. Um, so we can say, you know, this year it's all of our English classes, next year it's all the math, and, and we do that. Um, doing it that way, we think we'll be able to um, kind of have a continuous review of our courses, and, and each course will be viewed every three, three to four years. Um, oh, that's a long time in, in distance ed, uh, but, it, but it gets us something. It starts, um, it starts this review and, and uh, continuous improvement process. We have a, a time frame in mind in our heads, but it's not written down. So we have, it depends on how many new courses are coming on because that takes time and that's priority, how many mature classes we can get to on top of that. Um, I would love to be able to review courses in a three-year cycle. I think that makes sense, but it may or may not happen. So we just, we're just continuously doing reviews. We notify five or six faculty at a time that it's coming up. They fill out a form saying, this is my course, when did, how long has it been taught, um, how many semesters have you taught it, what semesters is it taught, and so on. Is it part of a sequence with prereqs or, and they give us some information about the course and then they have a chance to say, you know, some aspect of the course that they would like us to particularly focus on. And, you know, that we get four or five lined up and we just go ahead and go and do them. The instructional designer will set a goal every year. You know, you need to set your goals and objectives for yourself. And, um, and I'll say, but don't forget, we have this other thing coming up. You may not get 11 done in this fiscal year. So you, you want to think ahead and not set your goal too high. Every three years, we relook at all of our course curriculum and, and, and update it. I myself am updating my course every semester because it's a new client and there's sort of new areas that we have to focus on, especially in the retail industry, how much change that has been going on. So we look at everything and every three years at the longest, um, you know, we we, uh, we look at it and update curriculum. Especially at a fashion college where, you know, trends are shifting um, and uh, the industry is changing, you need to change with that process. Uh, the process in general is if you're changing a course, um, greater than say uh, twenty percent, it really there's a process to uh, for an instructor to bring that to the curriculum committee to discuss perhaps a course rewrite 
um, and then it goes through the process within the college, um, going to the um, uh, a vote within the department, and then to the chairs, and then to uh, the senior administration of the college, and then to SUNY. So there's there's a full process, but if it's um, smaller changes from semester to semester, that's I think where the instructor has to sort of check in and make sure they're delivering to the course of study, but at the same time moving forward uh, with the pace of uh, the industry in which we teach. We have found that if they are not actually teaching a class that they are building, they are less invested in building a course. So we've had people come in and they're like, I'm not teaching online, but I just want to learn about it. And we're like, okay, but you know that part of the, the product of this course is that you have a course that we evaluate. So if you don't have a complete course for us to evaluate, uh, you can't finish the program. And uh, we'll often get people like right at the end, like, well, I'm not teaching, so I'm, I don't think I need to build the course. I'm like, that's fine, but we can't certify that you can build the course if you don't build the course. So we've really tried to limit it to um, just the people that are like in the, that are actually teaching. And we even check banner to make sure. There are faculty that teach, um, you know, history, early American history and modern American history, and we'll pick on the opposite course for them each time. So, and, the, and we space those people out so they're not getting two or three courses reviewed all at once. And I find that really helps because if you review American History 1 and the American History 2 doesn't come up for a year, all of those sort of boilerplate changes we suggested in American History 1 will show up. They'll, they'll do it themselves. They'll go, oh yeah, well, I, was, I had to fix that in this course, so I'll fix that in this course too. And by the time we see the second one, a lot of the issues are gone. We give them as much time as they need to make the changes. So if we give a course back and have our face-to-face, -face, um, say in June, we kind of expect that by fall they'll have made most of the suggested changes. Um, if we give it back to them in March, well, they still have to fall. If we give it back to them in January, they probably still have to fall. Although some of the things, like I said, the really absolute must things, um, we have them do during the, during the semester.